Hi everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions with the review of the QNAP TS251 Plus NAS Drive. On the front of the device we have status, LAN, USB, hard drive 1 and hard drive 2 lights. Basically if there are any problems, these lights will indicate it very well. At the top you have the QNAP logo as well as two of the bays. And at the very bottom left hand side of the front panel we have a USB 3 port which is allowing for quick access. You also have the quick copy button just below the power button which you can press and change the functionality of any external drive plugged into the front. We'll get more onto the quick connect and the quick access external hard drive copying stuff a bit later on. The two hard drive bays are not toolless which is kind of annoying to be honest considering that other hard drives that I've used Synology it makes complete sense. Why would you need to mess around with fiddly screws when you can just use the design, clip the hard drive in, bolt it down, plug it in, no screws needed. It's not the end of the world by any means, it's just kind of annoying and not really necessary nowadays. It's not a deal breaker, just thought you should know. There is no front cover on this NAS drive, but it doesn't really need one. The bays clip in in such a way that it's fairly isolated from the outside environment, meaning the dust won't get in and make things hotter and slow things down. On the back of the NAS drive we have a fan, an HDMI port, two Ethernet ports, two USB 2 ports, a USB 3 port, the power port as well as a Kensington lock port. Setting up this NAS drive is much the same as all the others. All you do you add it to whatever network configuration you have, find the IP address, type it into your web browser and configure it there. You can also plug a USB connection directly in the front and into your laptop Use a software called QFinder, which recognizes the NAS drive is connected to your laptop and you can configure it there and then. You have two options, both are very, very straightforward. When you set the NAS drive up this way, you can choose everything like users, groups, shared folders. You can also choose the volumes. You can also choose the amount of times that hardware is scanned for errors like smart tests. Everything is configurable with wizards, just like it is with every other NAS drive. My first impression of the user interface was that it felt very Android-y. It feels like an operating system that hackers and very technical people will enjoy and take full advantage of, as opposed to Synology's Disk Station Manager, which feels like a clean cut, sort of like a Mac environment, where there's very, not limited, but very controlled applications and controlled settings you can change. QNAP feels a step above here when it comes to the user interface. It feels very customizable, it feels very professional and very sturdy. You'll know exactly what I mean when you pick one of these up. When you connect to it and you see the operating system for the first time, you'll realize this NAS drive means business. If you're looking for a particular app on this NAS drive to do a particular task, you can be damn sure you're going to find it on this QNAP NAS. The app store is very extensive, allowing you to expand the functionality and usability of this NAS drive. So you want to access this NAS drive from your mobile device, iPad, iPhone, etc, etc. My personal opinion is that it's not the greatest app and series of apps for that matter. They feel very, they feel like an afterthought, to be honest with you. They don't feel that particularly well built. They do the job for sure. You know, you can download your media onto your NAS. You can then connect to your NAS via your phone and you can play them. Most of my use with the applications on mobile devices was with the file manager which I used just to find a movie, click on it, and it played. I didn't want anything else, but if you're expecting an intensive, really well-made user interface, don't, because you're not gonna get that with the native QNAP apps. They work, but just, they're not, they're nothing special. So one of the quite unique things about this NAS drive is it actually includes a remote control in the box. So this got me thinking, hey, I, I wanna set it up on my TV. So I did just that. I connected an HDMI cable, from the NAS into my TV and then it started to say oh you need to download HD station okay so I downloaded it I then realized for one reason or another I think it was my internet connection it failed the install regardless I went onto the NAS drive from my desktop on a web browser I went to the HD station and I installed it it installed loads and loads of applications it installed Netflix YouTube the whole lot it was great I was navigating with the controller going left and right going into applications and signing in but there were two main problems that I came across don't get me wrong the HD station is really cool it's like a desktop that goes on your TV that's why it's called hybrid desktop or desk station or something like that and it just feels like you're using a PC or a, 
a computer environment on a TV. It basically turns it into a smart TV. However, it's not designed to be used purely with the controller. There are a few times where I was trying to move the mouse or the pointer and log in. It just felt very clunky and not responsive. I just feel that with a mouse and keyboard plugged in, which you can do, it would make it a hell of a lot easier. And also there are some apps that require you to sign in again. So the reason that's annoying is because you sign in initially to the NAS drive with your admin username and password, and then you have to sign in again. I wish there was some sort of single sign-on implemented here so that when you signed in once with your master username and password, it would then remember it and add it to applications. But hey, maybe I'm just dreaming. If you just want to use the controller on the TV, have a guess what the back button is. Nope, there is no back button on there. The back button is actually the, the power button. Overall though, I do think the HD station is a really, really good idea. It works well for the most part if you use it with a keyboard and mouse. If you're using it with a controller, expect a few minor annoyances, but it is by no means unusable. It's certainly fun, easy to use. You can go to YouTube, click and watch a video, go to Netflix, log in, click on your stuff, but don't expect to be able to type quickly. Don't expect to be able to move the mouse pointer fluidly around the screen. Something worth talking about is the application called Hybrid Backup Sync. This is pretty much a central hub for all your backup jobs, whether it's backing up from the NAS drive to a cloud service, whether it's directly one for one syncing from a NAS drive to a cloud service, or one step further, if it's a full backup to a media storage facility on the cloud, this is where you would control it. So you can set up multiple different scheduled tasks to say, okay, at six o'clock in the morning, I want the photos drive to go to Google Drive and at 7 a.m. I want everything from Google Drive to be mirrored with this folder. It's very, very customizable. I really do like hybrid backup sync. I feel like it's setting the standard for what syncing and backups should be on a NAS like this. It shouldn't just be some third party application. It should be a serious, well built and easy to use application such as this one. Also included in this tool is something called quick access. So say for example, you just wanted to stop by your home office and get the media from a certain folder on your NAS drive every time you plugged in a specific external hard drive. This is exactly what you can do. Take the hard drive, plug it into the front USB port. It will then initiate a task and go, okay, so I have a hard drive plugged in the front, back up this folder and then eject the drive if you choose it to be that way. Really cool, really simple, often unmissed. There's also a quick copy button on the front, meaning that you can have your hard drive always plugged in the front of the NAS drive and whenever you need to do a direct copy just press that copy button and whatever you've programmed it in to do it will do it so whether it's backup folder a b or c the moment you press it it will move those files onto the external hard drive cool stuff if this then that otherwise known as ifttt this basically allows various web services such as facebook google drive YouTube, you name it, to communicate to each other and act on rules that you define. Before we get into any of this, you must have a QNAP cloud account created and enabled so that the services can talk and action against your NAS drive. The first example use of this would be setting a rule that every time a particular file or folder or anything was added to a folder, it would send a tweet from your other Twitter account. To me, it seems fairly, not useless, but I don't need that function, but I'm just showing you as an example of how it can talk outside of the QNAP environment to another service based on a rule that happened within the QNAP NAS drive. The second one I had was a lot more useful, to be honest, was adding any file that I added to another particular folder directly into my Dropbox. Now I must admit it is fairly fiddly sometimes to set up these particular rules and get them just right. But when you eventually get the perfect setting, you'll realize the true value of this. I didn't use this personally, but I know you can set it up so that anytime movement is censored on a particular surveillance software, it will then log a screenshot or it can add a Excel spreadsheet entry. So every time it's activated, you can have timestamps. The world really is your oyster when it comes to customizing these certain specific rules to get the most out of this QNAP NAS drive. This is a really, really interesting design feature here. I know that if this, then that itself is its own service on the web anyway, QNAP have just chosen to embrace it and use it within their services so that they can talk inside and outside just to make everyone happy. 
and if you want those specific things done based on certain requirements you can do just that. I hope I've described that clear enough but if you feel I haven't there is a link in the description with a video also descriptions of when you would use it some uses some case studies etc etc so feel free to have a read and do some digging I'm sure you'll love it. Overall then, this is a well-made and highly customizable NAS drive. It does have fairly basic mobile apps, but I'm sure this will improve with time. And the HD station isn't exactly the finished product that I hoped for, especially with the remote control, but it's by no means a write-off. If you're looking for a two-bay NAS solution, this is one of the best on the market and most certainly worth considering. I've been Adam from Ads Productions. Thank you very much for watching.